Hola para todos. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm very pleased to introduce today jo Joseph Joffe. He is with us. We will talk about uh, what is the secret of German success in fight of the cor coronavirus. But before it, I would like just to make uh, some, some remarks in Spanish for our uh, audience about, uh, about the, the technical uh, things. Uh, por favor, si queréis preguntar, podéis preguntar uh, via chat. El chat está por debajo en el ángulo uh, derecho de, de, de la pantalla en que nos veáis. Podéis preguntar en español y yo sobre la marcha puedo traducir a, a, al inglés. Este es el detalle y ahora vuelvo, vuelvo al inglés. Joseph Joffe. Uh, Joseph Joffe is, serves on the Editorial Council of the Zeit and uh, is a fellow of the Stanford's Hoover Institution. He's author of many books. The most recent one is The Myth of American Decline. I really uh, recommend it, this book for uh, everyone who is interested in the relationship between China and, and the United, United States. Uh, Joseph, uh, welcome to virtual event of FIES and thank you very much uh, to be to, to, to with us. Today. A pleasure. Let's start. From the perspective of Spain, we sometimes really see Germany like, uh, like uh, the country who is really doing, at least during the, this pandemic, uh, is really uh, do, doing very well and uh, some some facts really show uh, shows show it germany had around uh, 163000 confirmed confirmed covid cases by the end of april according to data from uh, john hopkins university making in the world's sixth most affected country but its death rate both relative to the number of patients and to the country's population is remarkably low at around 6,600. Uh, 6, this translates to the 79 deaths for a million in inhabitants compared with 500 for Spain, 463 for Italy, 364 for France, and 192 for the U United States. Another example is that in Spain, for, the, for example, the rate of uh, infection among, uh, among uh, health workers is 26% and in Germany is only 6%. So Germany in the COVID-19 crisis is like a card player who was dealt with lucky and lucky hand, but also played uh, it well. Yeah. What is the secret of German success in fight of the COVID-19? First of all, let me say they were indeed lucky in the sense that the first cases were young people, healthy, healthy people, steers, who came in from Austria. So we had, you know, around Christmas or afterwards. So the Germans had a head start on dealing with the issue. That was, <clears throat> that was <clears throat> the lucky part. But there, I think, <clears throat> which is a longer lead time than other people and healthy people infected, hence a very low de death rate. But beyond, <clears throat> beyond the luck, there are structural reasons which I would like to, to emphasize. Um, first, you go back in history for many years, the health experts have been preaching, we have too many hospitals, <clears throat> we need to consolidate them into central, central hospitals that can do everything, and we have to reduce the number of beds. Luckily, this didn't happen. So let me give you an example which goes beyond the numbers. I'm now speaking to you from Munich. In a radius of one mile, 1.6 kilometers, we have five, five hospitals. Even if I had a heart attack, I could still drag myself <clears throat> on my hands and feet to the next hospital, which is 800 meters. Now compare that to New York or Toronto or Chicago or 
<clears throat> I assume also Madrid. So lots of hospitals, therefore lots of beds, and therefore, um, so I have to give you some number. Let me give you some numbers. Germany has eight beds per thousand of population, eight per thousand. Italy and Spain have three. <clears throat> Germany has 34 ICUs per 100,000. How do you say ICUs in Spanish? Intensive care units? Uh, ICUs. For intensive care. Ah, UCI. 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 Okay. okay. UCI. 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 <laughs> so, so, so Germany has 34 per 100,000, right? Italy and Spain have around have 12 and 10. That gives you an idea of the numbers that favor recovery and treatment. Um, given this kind of favorable infrastructure, Germany has 150 fully equipped labs. So Germany could do a lot more testing and more speedily. Two million. Two millions just in April, in March and April, and <clears throat> more than anywhere else in Europe. And accordingly, if you test a lot, you can you could identify the sick and send them into isolation, which which slows down the rate of the rate of spread. And so by now, the Germans can do one million tests per week all due to this kind of infrastructure our experts told us we have to reduce. So call it luck or call it, call it, um, call it uh, resistance uh, and, 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 and politics. Finally, I think the, the most interesting structural reason that goes beyond these numbers that we, we've been telling people, call it German federalism. Um, where health policy, and this is very critical, belongs to the 16 states. It's not a federal national issue. And with authority, say down to the local hospital, going down to the municipality. So if I'm a, <clears throat> if I'm a director of a hospital, I don't have to call the minister, let's say, I don't know, in Berlin or, or Washington. I can I can act. <clears throat> I can act on my own. Um, so, unlike centralized states like France, Germany was a, had had, so to speak, countless of experimental law, uh, uh, labs, in in a in a metaphorical sense, sixteen states, hundreds of municipalities, who could <clears throat> react more quickly and in, in a more decentralized manner. Give you, an, give you a story. So I go to my local hospital for physical therapy. This was in early March. And I said, you know, um, we, you could use this beautiful room with all the equipment and turn it into, what do you call them, CUs? Yeah. Intensive care? Uzi, Uzi. You see? She said, we are already organizing it. So I have very quick <clears throat> reaction time given to the de decentralized structure of German public health. Enough. Yeah, you are you are lucky, but also you have decentralized uh, politics. And uh, if if I remember well, I think that Germany is the third country in the world with the level of investment in health, only after the United States and Switzerland. So Correct. you, you Correct. are it's very, a very expensive system. It's a very, very expensive system. and very very good system. And so this is uh, is lucky for. But the United for, States for, spends as much of GDP, a uh, much more, you know, seventeen percent of GDP. The Germans and the Swiss spend twelve, but somehow that money is better organized and better invested <clears throat> than in the United States which is a long story and it doesn't... Because doesn't Germans are much more methodic <laughs> than, than Americans, well, maybe. I, maybe. Maybe they are, they are more methodic, but 
my, the example of my physiotherapy in the, in, the, in the neighborhood hospital is an interesting one because even if, you know, it doesn't matter how methodical you are, if you cannot act on your level close to home, if you don't have the authority to, as in this example, add suddenly add 20 CUs, C, um, we'll see. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so I think if you force me to explain, yes, there's money, yes, there's German methodical character, but there's also, I would emphasize decentralization and authority down to the local level, which makes for faster response. I think that is a good moment. I have another question uh, here, but just Alfredo Timmermans <coughs> has written a question which is linked with, with what we are talking about. Uh, Timmerman said, I would like to hear something about the ownership of hospitals. What is the weight of the public health care system over the private practice? Is, I, I think that is a good moment to, to ask it. It again, <clears throat> it's not a national system. It's a state-based system. It's not a you know, like Spain or Britain. Take Britain and National Health Service, one huge hierarchical organization. And so I keep going back to what I what I, what I said. <clears throat> look at decentralization. Then look at <clears throat> how many players there are. There are city hospitals. There are state hospitals. Then there are kind of, of course, there are private hospitals in Germany too. And they are kind of quasi-private hospitals run, say, by the church, by the churches, or by orders, you know, nuns. Uh, a nun may be more dedicated, and if I say cost less, if you wish, than, than, than a professional employed by <clears throat> Mount Sinai history, uh, Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. So again, it, it keeps, it is the multiplicity of actors, which is particularly important in our case where none of us knew what to do. And so you have many, many institutions that can try out stuff. Yeah. Okay. In Spain yesterday, in Spanish Parliament, we we had a very tense debate about the prolongation of the state state of alarm, and uh, probably the state of alarm will continue until June. Germany has taken much less drastic measures, and as far as we can see, has done uh, well. So. Can it be said that there is a change in the mentality of Germans in the sense that it, uh, they don't take uh, Gestapo to force <laughs> the Germans to be disciplinate because they are uh, already responsible? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, if we comp make cooperation with Spain, it's amazing how you have a really uh, much less drastic measures and better results. In Spain? And no, in Germany. Oh. In Spain, we have but, a very <clears throat> drastic measures and uh, really very bad. Uh, very let me, bad let me take, look, these, these issues are not that easy to answer. So let me take two extreme examples. You had Sweden with practically no drastic measures. Yeah. <laughs> you had Israel, a democracy, with very drastic measures, <clears throat> where even you know, the, the domestic intelligence agency tracked infected people by, by cell phone. Very harsh. Um, this, the Israelis were very, very successful with their very harsh, harsh measures. The Swedes were kind of, but not clearly, successful with you know, herd immunity and not lockdown. So, it's very hard to kind of uh, attribute success or, or failure to, 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 to the uh, nation or to the nature, nature of the people. Um, what I would like to say, and you, but you said you, you, the biggest surprise, no Gestapo in Germany, it is a surprise. What 
what happened, I think, certainly compared to non-democracies, take Russia, Iran, and, and Russia and Iran, very bad. They are not a model, as many people think that in an emergency or you know, the strong state does better. People always use China, but I do not trust Chinese numbers um, and the way and the way they they are they are, they are playing playing the disinformation game. Um, so now back back to the Germans. Were, what you are saying is that was there a cultural change here? Yes, it is. What I'm observing um, is uh, that 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 on the scale with Sweden, you know, totally loose and Israel totally, <clears throat> totally strict. The Germans are somewhere in the middle. And it, because of course the state here is very weak compared to the Russian or Chinese state. As I said, decentralized down to the federal level. But back to your question, the Germans have been such good Germans, not only because of a modern Gestapo or no, no Gestapo, because I think I would explain it in terms of a self-interest. You know, I'm, it's my self-interest to stay safe and to, to follow the rules, not great moral sense. And I would also add some kind of communal responsibility. So, so the you can hardly see German police on the streets like in Italy, or I assume maybe in, in Spain. Uh, in front of stores, the people form voluntar voluntarily form lines, you know, one at a time gets to enter uh, in, in, the, in the store. And they maintain, you know, the two meters distance. Um, again, you know, I have yet to see a policeman in my street. So that is, if you, if you wish, a kind of what I call a mixture of social responsibility and self-interest. It's not in my interest to be infected. Therefore, I will keep a distance, <laughs> okay? Yeah. And so the country, if you, the country kind of organize itself without a strong state. Um, that's my, my take on, on the culture. So the Germans are not behaving like Germans. Uh, <laughs> As we think they 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 are supposed to behave, you know, they're it's saluting common. and clicking heels. Common sense. Um, we have a, one question which is very linked with my next question. Uh, yeah. Juan Rodriguez Plaza asks, "I would like to know something about the opinion of German people about the financial help." that Spain, Spanish government is asking for, especially about bonus supported by German or Dutch public debt. Uh, I, I will put some facts before you start to, to, to answer this question. Two days ago, the European Commission estimates that the Spanish economy will collapse by 9,4% and the public deficit will reach more than 10%. Uh, the, uh, um, the unemployment rate, uh, rate will climb to more than 18% and the debt will stand at 115% of GDP. Spain will have to ask uh, for economic uh, aid from the European Union through the ordinary mechanisms, but it also uh, have to ask for the uh, rescue condition by, by, by reforms, I, I suppose. So in your opinion, do, uh, to what extent will the European Union be ge generous with, with Spain and, and Italy? And another question is the world one. And I think that every time when we have a crisis in the European Union, we back to the division between the North and South and so on. So in your opinion, is, uh, is unfair to accuse the Dutch or Germans of not being supportive because they criticize the existence of large debts and deficits in countries like Italy and, and Spain. What, what is your opinion? What, well, what chance is for Spain to receive 
very, very necessary uh, help in, in after the, the pandemic. Look, um, the club bed countries, you know, from Portugal to, to We Greece. don't like, by the way, we don't like these med countries because you know Club why we're not no, wait, med. No, I mean, Mediterranean. The, call it the olive belt, the olive belt <laughs> from Portugal to... <laughs> look, I would always might like to make a distinction between Spain and Greece and the Italians. Spain was on a very good road. It did what had to be done, and it came out of the 2008 crisis with you know, harsh reforms, and it, and it did quite well, like employment went up for us, the economy went up. The Greeks, our, um, the main culprits, you know, have worked also very hard. Italy has not. Um, so back to the Germans. In terms of economic policy, I think the Germans and the Dutch are right. This is not part of the treaties on the euro that, the, that some countries finance the deficits of, um, of, of the rest. On the other hand, if you look closely, the Germans have always you know, grumbled and said, no, you can't, there's a breach of treaty, there's no bailout, no, and so on. But in the end, they have never vetoed what the various rescue mechanisms of the EU and the Euro and the European Central Bank have done. They're like, in a way, they kind of looked bad, but they did good, if you wish. <laughs> Not very smart. Usually it's the other way around. I want to look good and do nothing. <laughs> but they did a lot, but, but, but looked bad. Look, they, the ECB, the bank, has poured some almost 3 trillion euros. 3 trillion euros. It's probably the, more than the, it, um, the size of the Spanish economy into, into the system. And the Germans have not have, 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 have let it go. Uh, and they have financed the rescue mechanism. You know, all these things that hand out money. They have allowed what is absolutely taboo under the, the monetary treaties, they have allowed the, the um, ECB to turn monetary policy into a fiscal instrument, meaning they have bought, bought up national debt and thus put money directly into those economies. So the upshot of this is, the Germans will behave like Germans by saying, saying the wrong things. But when it comes to the crunch, they will pay. And why will they pay? Not necessarily because they're such good people. No country has profited more from the common market and from the Euro than Germany. The Germans will not set fire to the system. So um, look beyond the headlines and uh, look at what they do. There's a big difference between the headlines and what they do. Yeah. True. Before I, I take some questions of the audience, my, my last question for you is, is I, I think that's the question which, uh, which I the most worry about. Yeah. Uh, in, your, in your books and articles, you have always insisted on the fact that after the Second World War, the United States founded a number of mm. multilateral institutions that have sustained the liberal order. Now, when the indispensable nation is absent and the multilateral uh, institutions are falling to manage the COVID-19, like, what about multilateralism? Without United States leadership, is multilateralism dead? How can we reinvent it? Because yeah. I think that we will need it because the end of the COVID-19 crisis uh, is impossible without uh, coordination and uh, multi multilateral cooperation. So what, what, what will happen <laughs> with it? Am I a prophet? Let me... you, you have a crystal ball, I, I hope, no. now. 
<laughs> but, but let me let me um, go back in the, in the more recent history. It is not just that the Germans were, you know, are being egotists and the Americans are, are destroying the architecture they, they built uh, after the war. Um, multilateralism began to die or become sick long before Corona. It started essentially you know, at the beginning of, 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 of our century, where, where the great multilateralism, certainly in the economy, in the international economy, was declining in favor of bilateralism. If you look, the last 20 years, we don't really been too successful with new multilateralist institutions. And, 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 and the trend has been towards bilateralism. You know, the EU making a deal with Japan, uh, uh, as an example, the Chinese building an Asian bank, which serves not so much multilateralism as their strategy for amassing power in the Pacific. Now look at us now, the Europeans. Um, what I see here is a trend towards reassertion of the nation state. I'll give you an example. It was the Europeans who started um, tightening border controls in Schengen land, or supposedly free, tr free travel from Portugal to Poland. We started long ago. We started certainly by 2015 when we had all these you know, a million plus refugees come in, borders suddenly went up. And Corona, to come back to, to not to the present, Corona has accelerated this. Every Schengen land country has sealed off its borders. I mean, the Germans, you know, and the Austrians, for instance, they are very close neighbors, same culture, same language. You want to go from Munich to Salzburg? You might again, like 20 years ago, <clears throat> wait in line with your car for, for, for two hours. So this is the bad news. The, the better news is that, um, that I think trade will bounce back. As soon as we overcome this, um, the, uh, the current crisis, uh, which is not a crisis of multilateralism, but it's a crisis of the national economies. Uh, trade will bounce back the way it bounced back after 2008. But I would think, and that's my last point, um, national interests will, will grow stronger. Meaning, let me give you an example from Germany, which is pretty good for the rest. Germany no longer produces the raw materials for drugs. They're produced in India and China. And that's true for the United States too, by the way. What we do here in the United States is, you know, we make the pills and we package them and, and we distribute them. But we depend on other countries like China for masks. I mean, for masks and stuff. So um, the point is we will renationalize certain parts of trade, where we no longer want to be caught with our pants down in an emergency like this. Uh, I think we'll have to pay a higher price for you know, antibiotics or diabetic drugs, but we'll keep them under, 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 under national control and to reduce the penance. And final point, I, I think Apple will no longer produce all of its iPhones in, um, in China for strategic reasons. I mean, you produce the stuff there and you give away the software to your competitor. So um, I think some of the supply chains will return, to, will return home. Um, having said that, I would still argue trade in general will come back. Okay, which is not. And we will still buy Spanish olives. 
Yeah, but this absolutely that we depend, for example, of anti, for antibiotics of China or Mars. Uh, it's it's common sense to, to produce yeah. this. This. Uh, so we have this. to be willing to pay for it. And as far as Apple is concerned, Apple iPhones, they are so overpriced. They're so overpriced. But you use it, and myself. That, 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 that you know, Apple can lower prices um, in the in, in 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 the home countries. We pay. Oh, we we. We are able to pay aesthetic the, the, the design. Of the no, I understand all that. I think they're just cool and they're good looking and all that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but they're way overpriced. Okay, we have some some questions from audience. The first okay. one is from Jose Francisco Mayora. He asks, "Do you Stop. think?" Excuse me. The Name is Francisco. Jose Francisco Mayora. Why he do you asks, have such long names? because we are in Spain <laughs> and we like two, two surnames, two names and so on. It's uh, Hidalgos. <laughs> Do you think German way of social behavior, uh, they are used to be a lot more quiet and less expressive than Southern Europeans in their way of interact? has played a key issue in limiting the spreading of the virus. And do you think Americans are being, being negligent in their approach to the pandemic or are they doing soft audience? Um, because this, this is the question we dealt with before, right? I mean, the cultural, the cultural yes. uh, background of, of national behavior. As I said, um, the Germans uh, don't behave like they behaved in, uh, from 1933 to 1945. And neither do the Spaniards or the it Italians, who also came out of a history of authoritarianism and um, a much longer history in the case of Spain than, uh, than Germany. The, are the Germans basically docile, I mean, obedient and disciplined? Let me remind you of one thing. 10 years ago or so, the EU banned cigarettes in public places, right? I thought the Irish, the French, the Italians, and the Spaniards, those crazy Catholics and Southerners would never obey. They did, immediately. Germany, the authoritarian Germans, endless fights here. Cases going up to the Supreme Court um, as to whether um, public places should be closed to, um, to, to, to cigarette smoking. So, our old ideas about national behavior, that's what I'm trying to say, don't, don't quite work anymore. Um, there's also, I think, let me add a, a new thought to this. Germans are extremely suspicious of state power, given their history. So they could never do, the, you know, the secret intelligence services here could never do what they did in Israel, uh, using, you know, tracking by, 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 by phone. And that's kind of bred into the, into the new culture the last 70 years. So governments are hesitant to be extremely, in, you know, to use imposition and force. Uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't quite work. And as I said before, Police powers and health is a matter of the states, decentralized. It's not a national government thing. So that still doesn't quite answer the, the question. So why are the Germans being so reasonable? Yeah. But, um, uh, what do you think about the American uh, attitude in this crisis? The, the second part of the question yeah, 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 about the yeah. United States, no? Frankly, I don't understand it. Because all the arguments I've made about Germany, you know, decentralization, federalism, um, weak, weak, relatively weak state, apply to the United States too. And yet, my theory does not work for the United States. The United States has done extremely badly, better now, a lot better now, but they haven't done well, though I one should have expected them being structurally like Germany that they have done better. Um, if you force me to, 
I would say there is the problem is in the White House, where 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 the the president at first denied that there was a problem, then second said this will pass very quickly, we will open up soon, and he had to go through the school of hard knocks and statistics. Maybe, you know, if if they had a pre pre another president who was trustworthy and who had real authority rather than being a clown, um, the country would have act, would have acted more efficiently and um, and more quickly. But I'm going to end here. It is still a puzzle to me, like why a country that is so so much like the Germans has done so much worse. The Next puzzle. question, maybe is much more for one Spanish guy, but what is your opinion? Why is it possible a conflict? Uh, the, <laughs> the, question, the question is, why is it possible a conservative socialist government in Germany and not in Spain, where there is a socialist communist government? Look, why is it possible that Angela Merkel have coalition with SPD and we here have like the left socialist party with Unidos Podemos, which, which is the, the far left, it's communist maybe, party. You know, I'm not going to say anything bad about my favorite country, Spain, um, but the politics are such that even in a, in, a, in, a, in a murderous crisis like Corona, the, the rivals don't come together. Spain has had a very weak government for one, how am I, four years now? No, this is, we change, we have, yeah, this is the- There's a minority government, right? Yeah, it's a new government in, in uh, last year. It's very, very, uh, weak government, definitely, yeah. and we have a lot of changes. Just so, let it so, there. So, you know, I praised weak government in, in Germany in the sense of the central state having to defer to the to the 16 federal states and so on. But if you have too weak a government, that's obviously a problem in Spain too. Uh, I don't understand. I, you know, I don't want to get involved in Spanish domestic politics, but the numbers in Spain, especially the uh, death rate among uh, um, hospital medical personnel is just outrageous. And so I, I would want to look at why, the, why, why Spain, the Spanish government is so organized that it cannot act. And maybe, maybe the problem is a government that is not strong enough. Um, but I don't, you know, I wish I knew more about Spanish culture and Spanish mentality. Uh, I just have to come more often to Madrid. <laughs> Okay, last uh, last question, last question, or uh, maybe two. Uh, just I, I have a lot of uh, one of the Jose Jimenez Sanchez is after this crisis. Uh, what do you think? Will we have more nationalism, the old national states, and uh, what what will happen with with national states in in Europe and nationalism? Yeah. That's a very that's a very good question. It really, is a question about will there be more Europe or less Europe? Yeah. Um, I'm not too optimistic about more Europe. Certainly, right now we are less Europe, and I mentioned that ten minutes ago. That in a in an existential crisis, the nation state comes back. We do look toward to Berlin or Washington or, or London uh, and not to Brussels. And I've mentioned that by the example of how all of us pulled up our borders again. Um, so 
I might like to make a distinction here. The nation state is definitely back. Whether nationalism as we knew it from the first, you know, from the 20th century will be back, I don't think so. I think the nationalism, well, this is an important distinction. The nationalism which we see now is not the aggressive nationalism of, you know, the first half of the 20th, 20th century, you know, we went out to conquer and to subjugate and to occupy, you know, where it's, ex it's not expansionary nationalism, it is defensive nationalism. Not aggressive, it's defensive. So we pull up borders, so we think about our own nation first, we want to use the resources for ourselves, but that's very different from the aggressive nationalism that we saw in the period, let's say between the French Revolution and the end of World War II, 150 years. I don't think that nationalism still exists. So <clears throat> the upshot is more nation state, more defensive nationalism, but no or very little aggressive nationalism. And that's the good news. Yeah. Last question, because I, I promise you that that will be for 40 or 45 minutes of virtual even. So the last question is from Gabriel Cortina. And he said, summer is coming. Mallorca is the German lander <laughs> in the Mediterranean. German, what? German la land, lander. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Tierra yes. yeah, de Alemanes. Wait, we are in the Mediterranean. We in the Mediterranean Sea. Peacefully. Yeah, of course, of course, always peacefully. <laughs> and he said, please give us some advice and help. I, I can add that uh, first uh, Angela Merkel said that the Germans only can make this summer national tourism, but two, three days ago, she said maybe, maybe that maybe Germans um, could travel to Ibiza, Mallorca, Menorca, and so on. You know, we the 10% the of GDP of Spain depends on tourism. Tourism is a really, really very important dimension of, of uh, Spanish economy. And German tourists are, are the, the, the key of, of it. Yeah. So uh, please tell us something. Uh, <clears throat> let me ask you, do you want millions of German tourists to come to Spain in, in Corona? I don't know. I, I personally don't, don't mind, but I think that that is uh, what I, I think that the, the, the people from, from the islands in the Mediterranean yeah. Sea really desperately uh, yes. wait for. for uh, That's a very, very. 83 yeah. millions of foreign tourists came every year to Spain. So even yeah. we, we try to, to have national tourism, it's impossible to cover because uh, the, yeah. the Spanish are only 47 millions. You know, if everybody go to, 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 to spend the summer in, in the coast and, uh, of Spain, it's impossible to, to recover uh, this. Everybody thing. could take two trips. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> Look, it's a very, very tough, tough dilemma. Um, and I understand all the numbers that you've just given me and, uh, and the dependency on tourism. I, I, I wonder how I would act personally. You know, I go to Italy every year. Mm -hmm. I probably will probably not go to Italy this, this year. I will not, don't want to get into an airplane or into a train or into a bus. Um, so, and I, I would think that lots of Germans will probably think twice, unless we, we now have May, we are now talking, the tourist season begins practically now, unless there's some real serious improvement in the numbers. Um, and Spain and Italy, the two really troubled countries are 
are probably not in good shape to uh, to attract uh, to, to attract tourists. So um, I um, it depends. It depends. With the next several weeks, can can Spain bring down the statistics? Uh, people are getting sick and tired of staying at home. They want out. They let me make one last last point. Perhaps we're now having a great experiment beginning in Germany. We are this month um, bit by bit. Um, loosening up the lockdown you know restaurants will open <clears throat> more than two people can walk together in the streets some schools will be open at the end of an end of may uh, certainly um, um, nursery schools will open up we'll see i think we're having we're running an experiment now we're running experiment whether we have we have we are getting out of the tunnel or whether we're going to see a second wave. Um, this will be very interesting to watch. As, as countries are loosening up, what will happen? We'll know. It'll take you know, four, five, six weeks. Yeah, and so we will see. But uh, German tourists always are very welcome. Oh, by America. the way, those are very rich Germans who have their houses. <laughs> yeah. So they go and can... stay. They can isolate themselves. So, so mass tourism will take longer time, I think, to to um, increase to to, 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 yeah, to increase again. Um, it's a it's a very sad it's a sad story, but let's watch how the experiment unfolds in the next four weeks. Okay. Huh? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you really very much to accept to be here today with us. And we last week we talked about the Israel experience. Today we talk about German experience. So next, first try to show that uh, some countries can do a um, different way to manage this this crisis. Uh, well, let me tell you that I want to come back to Spain as quickly as I can. So. I promise you. I promise you that we will invite you, and we will talk about it in in live. I my hope. interest that Spain uh, opens up again. <laughs> it might. Uh, okay. Thank you very much for our audience, for everybody who has been hearing here uh, us, and um, see you next week. <laughs> and thank you very much. Bro. Hasta Bye. la vista. Hasta la vista. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Can I get off? Yeah. Ciao. Bye.